there are so many things that have been just kind of running through my mind since I made the decision. And I really want to make it clear that I'm not trying to, you know, expose the school board or bash anyone. This is more so me telling about my experience and my story. I've written a lot about the feeling of being the only black English teacher. And for many other teachers who teach other subjects, yes, they may be black and yes, they may have an understanding about how to reach those students culturally and personally. But for me, English is such a core delicate subject because we're teaching students how to communicate. We're teaching them how to understand the way they think, how to be creative, how to write and express themselves. But when you have only one person in that position that really connects with those students, it limits the other students who are assigned to other teachers who they want to learn to love English. They want to learn how to comprehend and write, but they can't connect with that teacher because there's no relation. Thank you so much for tuning in to Teaching for the Culture. This is your host, Bianca Goolsby, and I'm so excited to be with you today. I have a phenomenal educator that was working in Duval County Public Schools. Her name is Miss Lewis, and she is a rock star. I have been following her journey online as she was teaching her kids how to write, and she's actually a published author, and she's helping people around the world publish their books. So I seen your press release, and I seen your announcement, and I was like, I have to have you on the platform so that we can have a conversation about this so that more people are aware of what's happening in the classroom. I want you to be able to kind of let the people know what's going on in your life and your journey right now. Uh, several things are going on, uh, but I recently made the decision to leave the classroom after teaching full time for five years. Um, the only black English teacher for five years um, at a predominantly black school. And so there were several reasons why I decided to leave, but the pandemic pretty much just intensified those reasons. I, I want people to understand one part that you had just said that that is just mind blowing. So in a predominantly black school. You were the only African-American teacher that was teaching your subject matter. Correct. For five years. And so why is, why is something like that problematic? Ooh, many reasons. Um, the first reason I can think of is because most of our students at the school are below grade level. And when they're entering high school, not really understanding the way to transition and adjust, there are several things that are already kind of stacked against them. And to have teachers who can't really connect with them culturally or even personally prevents them from advancing with education. Yeah, you're spot on. So what has been going on with COVID in your district? <sighs> from the very beginning with the transition back to school, we started out in a hybrid model. And so we did about four weeks where the students were coming two days a week to campus and then virtually. So it was double learning and double teaching. And then we made the transition back to full time on campus. However, the teachers, me, myself included, we had to still have that dual lesson planning. So I had virtual classes as well as face to face and teaching through a mask while trying to transition with five minutes to get onto my virtual classes. And with cases starting to increase on campus, it got very difficult just trying to mentally stay sane and balanced enough to, you know, teach my students effectively. Yeah. So what what is the biggest obstacle that you've had to face during this pandemic with trying to reach your children? Communication. Um, those who are connecting virtually, limited resources and me having to just go the extra mile to reach out to them when they can't connect with me during those live lessons. Um, another obstacle with the students who were coming face to face, trying to engage them in lessons with mask on was very, very difficult. Um, and with the condensed time, this year we had 45 minutes where last year it was 90 minute period. So less time to teach with those extra obstacles just was taxing. Absolutely. And so what was your breaking point where you was like, I, I, I just can't do it anymore? <sighs> there were several things leading up to just the final breaking point. Um, 
One of the major breaking points happened when I was evaluated. It was an informal evaluation, but I still felt like I was being assessed um, at a normal standard in those conditions. And then when I made several requests in the past that weren't met, it kind of just opened my eyes to things as far as me not being valued or appreciated and administration not really understanding my struggles as a teacher, wanting to be effective with these extra, you know, obstacles against me. So you talked about your observations. So they were really evaluating your effectiveness during the pandemic and holding you to the same standard? Absolutely. Um, They didn't make it seem as such, but we still had to have the standards present on the board. We still had to have um, a lesson in place where it was attached to the curriculum and the text that's provided. We still had to show them how we engage students. So definitely still assess under the same standard. Wow. So when you were evaluated, how how did you feel? Did you feel supported at all during this process? I felt supported, but not heard, if that makes sense. Uh, it was yeah. more so me speaking up and explaining, these are the things that I'm struggling with in the classroom and virtually. And I need some type of, you know, flexibility with the things that we're being asked to do. Uh, Being told that you have the autonomy, but then being held to a different standard is kind of, it was a conflict. It wasn't really, it was more so you're telling me one thing, but I'm looking and seeing something else. So definitely um, got me to my breaking point. So how did your students react to the news? I try my best to kind of tell them one by one. I only had two face-to-face classes, so it was easy to kind of break the news to them. My virtual students were already, I was already losing them. So the attendance was already dropping. I had made connections with them, but with their personal situations at home, it was difficult to figure out why they weren't logging on. So my face-to-face students, of course, were impacted more, but it was the students who had me previous years that were just more emotional about oh, Mrs. Lewis is leaving us. You know, we thought you were going to be all the way here through our senior year. You know, this was the first um, class. 2021 is the first class that I saw kind of grow from ninth grade all the way through 12th grade. And most of them I had as ninth graders. So that made the decision a lot more difficult for me because I really did want to be there physically to see them out and congratulate them and really be present in that moment, which I I still will be. Um, It's just a different look now. But it was those students who really made me understand the impact that I've had during my time there. So what's next for you? Because I I know that this had to be weighing on you making that decision as many educators um, and even myself. Like, I, you know, I battled this situation where, you know, I battled leaving. So what's next for you? The first thing, of course, is my writing. I've been writing prior to entering the classroom. Born to write is my one of my mottos. Um, the pandemic actually encouraged me to start teaching virtually in addition to teaching you know, virtually with the school board. Um, but I started a tutoring service to extend myself to those students who just didn't have access to the teachers when they were doing the live lessons. Um, and with my writing, I'm publishing, working on my second novel. I have gotten heavy into my screenwriting with my MFA degree. Um, In 2016, I kind of put it to the side because of teaching, but now I am back on the grind with that, breaking into Hollywood hopefully soon, and just really on my writer grind, trying my best to, you know, pursue that purpose full time. But teaching is still in me, so I'm still going to provide those services and extend myself to those students who need that extra one-on-one support, even if it's virtual. Um, And I am now making myself available for face-to-face as well. That is amazing. And I'm so excited to follow your journey and I will make sure that I put the links for people to follow you and and support you in this work. So what would you say to the district that are losing so many high quality educators? What are some of the things that they can do to kind of help prevent this happening? The first thing that I believe the district should do was recognize that teachers are human. They treat us as if we are robots. You know, they gave us so many instructions and so many demands and we had to snap our fingers and turn into, you know, a new type of person that they wanted us to be to meet those expectations. So 
I believe they need to give us more grace or give teachers who are still in the classroom more grace and have compassion towards those personal situations that we're also dealing with, especially the teachers who have those connections with students. It's very, very difficult for us to keep teaching like robots when we care about our students. Well, their well-being, why they're not logging on, why are they absent when they're coming to class and we see that they're struggling. I don't have time to stop and help them because I can't touch them. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I can't be as close to them as I need to be for them to feel comforted and supported. And I just think the district didn't understand how this would impact teachers. Yes, you had a plan in place for us, but did you really understand how this would impact us as human, as people, not just as an employee or a professional person that is expected to meet these expectations? So. And I really want to make it clear that I'm not trying to, you know, expose the school board or bash anyone. This is more so me telling about my experience and my story. I've written a lot about the feeling of being the only Black English teacher. And for many other teachers who teach other subjects, yes, they may be Black and yes, they may have an understanding about how to reach those students culturally and personally. But for me, English is such a core delicate subject because we're teaching students how to communicate. We're teaching them how to understand the way they think, how to be creative, how to write and express themselves. But when you have only one person in that position that really connects with those students, it limits the other students who are assigned to other teachers who they want to learn to love English. They want to learn how to comprehend and write, but they can't connect with that teacher because there's no relation. You know, and it's not just about skin color. It's about knowing how to have compassion for students who may come from where you come from, who have the same experiences that you had. And I've had some poor conversations and um, just things that were said with teachers in the, the department who just didn't really understand why I was so passionate about having black literature in front of our students or having them understand the importance of knowing black authors. It's not just about race or skin color, it's about them knowing their history and they learn that through English because they're learning to communicate and express. And it was just very difficult trying to fight the system within the system. And so I had to find my way out and really be uh, courageous enough to be able to express more about my experience without you know, being negative or being unprofessional. It's just more so people being aware you know, I'm trying to conform and fit into this system that doesn't value me. And they're hiring me because they need a black English teacher to reach these students and double blocking me with classes where students become unit deficient because they have me twice intensively and then for English, but that other intensive class could have been for the math class that they needed as a freshman. So there are just so many different obstacles where the students didn't recognize them. And as their teacher, I had to always be the face and the strong one to just keep pushing and fighting for them. But as it started to wear on me as a person and me having to contrast with my own morals because I'm trying to teach the way they want me to teach. Um, so again, there are just so many different things that I can express. Um, but the biggest thing is representation matters, you know, and not just having the token black teacher, but having teachers who really care and understand what those types of students need. You are spot on and you are absolutely correct. And I hope that people understand that we need to be intentional with our education system and the outputs that it's producing, especially to our black and brown children and to be mindful of the damage that it can do to educators that just are passionate about the subject matter. And so I just thank you for, for from the bottom of my heart for taking the opportunity to share your story. And how can people follow your journey and how can people follow you? My handle on most social media is at I write for you underscore LRW. I write for you is the name of my publishing company, actually, which I don't think I mentioned. Uh, I've been publishing myself and other authors for 10 years now. And a part of the reason why I transitioned out of the classroom is because it was functioning more of a, like a side hustle where it is my true passion. So now I have the authority and the time to really focus on that and growing that. So I write for you underscore LRW on Twitter and Instagram. 
on Facebook as well. Uh, my websites are also going to be available on those handles. So in the future, as far as I'm moving forward, it's more so focusing on my writing, publishing books, assisting first time authors. And again, just kind of break, trying to break into Hollywood and pitch my scripts and continue to teach as well in every capacity that I can. Absolutely. Well, I'm very proud of you. And just thank you for the work that you've done in the community and what you will continue to do, especially for our young children. I know that they're looking up to you and I know that they're going to see someone successful and they're going to see that, hey, I can be an author. I can write a book. And these are the things that are not normalized and celebrated in our society today. So just thank you for breaking barriers and for your fight for our kids. It's really appreciated. Thank you as well. You inspired me to do the same. I've been watching and following you also. And just to extend that grace toward you, I know that this fight isn't easy. I know that you're doing a lot to help teachers who don't have voices have their voices heard. And so I'm very appreciative of this opportunity from you as well. Well, thank, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And so Thank y'all for watching Teaching for the Culture. Please make sure that y'all check out Miss Lewis and the phenomenal things that she's doing. And until next time.